and gentlemen and welcome to the esteemed face time with leaders and initiative by world development corporation my name is tanay all and i'm an anchor at world development corporation face time with leaders is a platform for industry veterans to come together to share their knowledge ideas thoughts and best practices with one another as well as with upcoming industry leaders in a nutshell we attempt to encapsulate the multi decadal learnings of all our industry stalwarts we hope that by conducting these face time with leader interviews we can bring together a global community of eminent personalities by bringing together such visionaries on one platform we hope to play a part in inspiring the lives of other leaders great learnings from great leaders undoubtedly assist everyone as they help us to identify nurture and work on trade secrets that have already proven a success formula for so many and this is what we aim for with these sessions by making them a gathering of industry stalwarts and a knowledge sharing community we have one such corporate giant on facetime with leaders with us today mr joseph skaria junior we welcome you on the show sir thank you tanay he is a distinguished cxo level leader with a global footprint in fundraising sustainability management and cross sector collaboration with over two decades of experience he has successfully navigated complex partnerships and driven sustainable change across more than 40 countries His expertise extends to identifying and building new markets, strategic planning, program development, and international development consulting, making him a versatile leader in the for-profit and not-for-profit sectors. Currently serving as the chairman and managing director of Junior Ventures, he continues his commitment to the global good through cross-sector collaboration, organizational sustainability advice, and capacity building. His role includes strategic planning for social entrepreneurship. business development and international development consulting so sir to begin with throughout your career you've taken on various roles from sales to ceo positions how has continuous learning played a role in your professional evolution <clears throat> thank you tane and uh, thanks a lot for inviting me to be knowing each other yeah a very good question yeah i enjoyed working in the for profit sector as well as in the non profit not for profit sector yeah uh, it, it's a career spanning almost uh, 25 to 30 years uh, maybe it's more than that so i started uh, life with none other than the birla group in india so there uh, and continued with uh, another french company non extractal sa so that was the greatest experience in my life in terms of interacting with people because i was in sales and marketing so you know sales and marketing is such a uh, it's a coveted job from external but it is a extremely challenging job because it is always kpi driven and if you are not uh, fulfilling your kpi you are out of the company well that's from a job perspective but if you really look it from the uh, the perspective of a company which is adding uh, more to the economy of the country you are uh, really adding value through that company to your country and also to the global development you know it depends upon where you're working if it's an indian company or a multinational company so i did really enjoy that but the the, the beginning of the career when you are small and young boy you want think on those kind of a macro level thinking already you always think that how do you survive out there but that is the greatest learning but as a student i always wanted to be part and parcel of uh, a movement where people participates which adds more value to the sustainable and uh, balanced economy uh, of uh, any country so i was a student leader when i was a, i was in college and uh, uh, universities like that so that also um, you know sort of inspired me to look into the development sector or what we call the social development sector which adds a lot of value uh in several ways not just on the philanthropy side or the charity side but it has to be looked more than a philanthropy and a charity because it adds uh a tremendous uh, you know traction and movement by inspiring people of various walks of life uh you know including the industry magnates and industry leaders who are the kind of uh, voice in development in some other way uh, not just on the economy development but they can influence and they also uh, could be uh, you know used uh, to influence the government sector as well as the third sector and engaging also the media this is a fourth estate which we call 
So that got uh, exciting uh, into me. And that is why I got this opportunity to be working with uh, the UN systems, that is UNICEF. So there in UNICEF, I've been working for the rights of the children. And uh, that also, also created, you know, I mean, the, the learnings from the, the industry side has really helped me to be translating to add more value uh, to through uh, to the uh, real so development of the country. It's just it, whether it is economic development, social development, anything political or because these all work into a sort of a tri-sector kind of collaboration. You also mentioned that it's a tri-sector. Tri-sector means you know the public, the private, uh, as well as the non-profit and the people, or we can call it the people or the civil society. Uh, the, the real word is a civil society because engagement of civil society is so critical, whether it is for business and also within the civil society, the trade unions comes in out there. So these are yeah. all opinion leaders out there. So that I enjoyed working with UNICEF and then ha I had this uh, greatest opportunity to work uh, lately with another organization that is Habitat for Humanity, which was, uh, you know, sort of uh, spearheaded by none other than the former uh, U.S. president, Jimmy Carter. So I had been working with Jimmy Carter uh, and his projects and Habitat for almost 23 years in different parts of the world. And also with UNICEF, which has helped me to be traveling to almost 70 countries. And also I was in charge. Uh, I was a director for Asia Pacific for that. So it's just not on the social development spectrum. My focus was more in terms of engaging the business magnates of the world, not just India, of the world, to be coming together, working with Habitat for social development. We were in the sector of housing, housing and water and sanitation. So it's just like, a, again, a tri-sector kind of a movement out there. The private sector, that is the high net worth individuals of the world. So whether it is uh, uh, Mrs. Birla or Kumara Mangalam Birla or uh, Meswanis, Nikhil Meswanis, which is from Reliance and uh, uh, none other than uh, Deepak Parikh or Sanjay Nair. These are the kind of a people whom we used to be working with. And I've got around 27 of them in, in India and almost some 150 plus people from across the world where I was interacting. So my role is basically to inspire them in terms of how to be giving to the society through a platform like Habitat for Humanity and all the UN system and uh, encouraging them to put in their money, I mean, I call it their, uh, uh, what do you call it? Their treasure, their talent, and their time. So maybe the three T. And then engaging through an advocacy model uh, with the government to be implementing in uh, selected countries where I was focusing in. I hope I answered uh, you know, your question. Yes. So looking ahead, what do you envision as the next big challenge or opportunity in the realm of social development and how do you plan to contribute to addressing it? Fantastic. See, my experience, uh, <clears throat> Tane, uh, in terms of uh, being the, the connector uh, with the, the industry or the, in the so-called industry magnets uh, with the, the social development sector and coupled with working with the government sector. So when you call a non-profit organization or a NGO uh, or non-governmental organization, it's actually that particular organization who's doing the job of the government uh, in a voluntary manner and mm. where the government cannot reach out. And that's why they are complementing, they are complementing the role of the government in any country. And it could be at different intensities. Like the in intensity with which the UN organization does it is just like a, it's beyond a multinational corporation or, uh, uh, or an international non-governmental organization, which we call INGO. These are all multi-billion dollar organizations, which is being run as a uh, equivalent to a corporate sector or even better than a corporate sector. So that's why the NGO name, I need to give that kind of a clarification. And within that NGO or INGO, or uh, then they work with the bilateral and the multilateral organizations around the world. And that means the government comes in out there. So when the government comes in there, they get the opportunity to be working with at the policy level in terms of mm. policy formulation, in terms of policy advocacy, in terms of changing the policy. So that is where this interaction of the tri-sector is such a powerful, uh, you know, powerful tool or powerful engagement of the people 
and that's only the the you know we only have to uh, get the mindset changed and see that how these three sectors can work together and there in uh, the the corporatism or the uh, let me say the, the the real professionalism in terms of results driven approaches comes mainly from the corporate sector because that's the kind of the culture and the decorum and the discipline available in the corporate sector. From uh, that uh, decorum, discipline, or the culture in the corporate sector, when it is being worked together in the tri sector, so that uh, sort of it's an osmosis process. You know, it gets uh, joined by the tri sector approach out there, and you bring in that kind of a uh, discipline, results driven approaches. So that's what uh, should be emerging, and that's what is one of my dream. Uh, for the future, and it is happening already. Uh, you know, it's just not that uh, the promoters of a corporate sector is taking their money, but to, today with the CSR and the ESG kind of an approaches, which is uh, being uh, led by the corporations, that uh, that particular culture is emerged. So we need to be looking that it is just not a greenwashing out there from the corporate side, because the moment it becomes a greenwashing, you know, I mean, complaints driven. No, it has to be passion driven. Complaints driven, okay, I'm trying to do that because I don't have much time, you know, okay, uh, uh, you know, government is, uh, you know, saying that, let me do that. But if it comes that complaints and the, within the ESG and the CSR, they, 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 they have a role out there because almost all the money which is being generated is none of any businessman's money. It is available in the nature. You understand? Mm -hmm. So you are only exploiting the nature in very many ways and trying to make that and you becoming part and parcel of that. But there is a responsibility. That is what ESG is talking about. You know, I mean, you got to uh, add that responsibility has to be really responsible. You know, it has to be driven as passion, not just on the whitewashing or the greenwashing kind of an approach out there. So that's what I'm looking into. And that is one thing. And I wanted to become a, a sort of a spokesperson for that in that particular uh, sector, whether it is ESG, being in the boards of the uh, reputational, you know, reputable corporations who can become a, a sort of, a, um, uh, you know, you know, it's it, it just like branding. So branded organization or a branded leader, like if, uh, let's say, Deepak Parikh talking something about the housing, his word is being heard. So mm -hmm. it just to be influencing such leaders who becomes good advocates in terms of building that kind of a, not just complaints driven, but passion driven approaches to make uh, the world a better place. That's number one. The second, there are examples in the world like uh, Ben and Jerry. Like if you take Ben and Jerry, it's a company which started for with, uh, now it's been acquired by Unilever, but it started as a company uh, to be responsible to uh, make, uh, you, you know, what do you call, uh, conservation, conservation of forests and things like that. They came out with this fantastic marketing ideas of uh, ice creams, which has got Amazon forest uh, name and stuff like that. Or uh, let's say our own, coming back to India, our own Tata group. You know, see, mm. the Tata group is owned by none other than by the Tata Trust. See that, and 70% of the money which generates in the Tata groups for uh, philanthropy or social development or uh, influencing such kind of a uh, rural development. That's a great example. Why don't you, I don't have to go to Ben and Jerry or Patagonia or Tom Shoes, nothing of that sort. In, uh, in our own country, way back in the 19th century, believe me, 19th century in 1896, when Dorabji Tata started, started that, he had that inbuilt that culture into Tata. And that's why everyone in India loves Tata so much. They say they're building, mm. you know, oh, there is a saying like, you know, I mean, kaam karne ka to tata ka, or jute penne ka to bata ka. There's a saying like that. Yes. <laughs> so, so, I mean, just in the, in the minds of Indian, having a job in Tata is better than even having a job in the old generation to have a safe and secure job with the government like that. So that's, uh, you know, Tane, that's what I wanted to, building that kind of a tri-sector approach, seeing that the NGOs are not uh, martyrs, uh, Dehatis, uh, you know, such kind of, but they are entrepreneurs. That's why the social yeah. entrepreneurship has emerged and we need to be building in that kind of a, uh, mariada or the decorum and the discipline in that sector. Thank you. So working in social development can be emotionally challenging. How do you maintain resilience and motivation in the face of obstacles or setbacks? Yeah, uh, basically, I mean, the world is changing today and I'm very happy because uh, 
Today, there are a lot of people from the mainstream business sector, uh, especially graduates from even IAMs and ISBs in India or IITs, they get into the social development because of out of passion. It was not in not prevalent in the 70s and 80s. Going to social development was considered to be social work. It is a job of a, a lady uh, who doesn't have anything else to do at home, maybe getting bored and you go out there, which I call it the so sweet approach. They call it so mm. sweet. You know, I mean, uh, you know, that that age is gone. And also that particular time of uh, the, the, the CEO's wife doing something has gone away. And now today with CSR and ESG, uh, social development has become a boardroom discussion matter. You know, that is the recognition it has got. And people will use it greenwashing or whitewashing, whatever it might be, but it has got a role to play because if you do not have the community with you, whether earlier it was the job of the trade unions, but CSR and social development is also a, you know, a building block uh, and uh, for building a company's reputation through goodwill, through community interaction. And if there is no community and if the company is not giving to the community or making the community into, you know, I mean, what do you call engaging, uh, there is no social development. So people are realizing that the people value or the civil society value. Now, having said that, yeah, in my age, when I started that and I left um, uh, the Birla and when I left the Tractal where I had a, I was the area sales uh, manager officer for, you know, it was a very uh, cute and paying and traveling and all those kind of a style statements were there. But when I left there, my own classmates said that you are a, what are you doing? You know, I mean, I don't want to use, uh, you know, good language out there. Even if then who put me, you know, they didn't come on here. Now, when I got into UNICEF and then we got into traveling around the world and then I started talking in different platforms, including teaching in, you know, uh, international management institutes, then I become an advocate of that. And probably the CSR origin, even my management research report from Asian Institute of Management, where I studied on how well business and development can work together. There is a program known as development management. It's an MBA. Uh, you know, so where we are talking how well the business skill could, could be utilized for social development and how we build a marriage between these two sectors where the social development worker is not a martyr. So, well, these were all the challenges knowing out there. And there I could become a good leader out there in terms of opinion makers, you know, I mean, influencing the opinion leaders and interacting. And even my classmates who are very big uh, IAM, MBAs and things like that, they can only meet one Kumara Mangalam, but I can meet 100 Kumara Mangalams because I've got an opportunity out there because I'm I'm the, uh, you know, uh, what do you call, trendsetter. I am the uh, person who is going with an idea out there which will help uh, cost-related marketing or uh, advancing the business by engaging the community. These are all not, not ideas which we cannot think uh, uh, you know, just in the in the cocoon of uh, an office out there, and as uh, that's exactly was the challenges, but uh, it was also the the gains for me. As I told you, know I can reach out to 150 corporate leaders. If I would have been in say Birlas or Tractals or this kind, maybe I would have become a uh, to the level of a managing director. But mm. then I have to go to CII or Rotary or Lions in terms of that interaction out there. Maybe if I'm a good uh, vocally, which I am, uh, you know, uh, vocally good person, I can in, even build that relationship. But I would not be in a position to inspire and influence them to do something uh, to the society. I have got limitations out there. But then here I have, I, I'm not losing anything. I can go and uh, even I can um, come and meet uh, Tane and try to influence you and uh, I will jokingly say that I can pick pocket very well uh, to be <laughs> your money put into some right uh, places. Like, yeah. Sir, as a as chairman and managing director of Junior Ventures, what goals and initiatives are you currently focus on, focusing on to promote global good and inclusivity? Uh, yeah, uh, Junior Ventures is I've just uh, created a proprietary firm for me because all okay. my ideas, whichever is coming to it should be with me, then I have the freedom to do that. Then I associate with um, other ventures and opportunities to make uh, global good. Uh, thank you for that question. So I'm right now, I have a company known as 
you know, SAB, that is Sustainable Build. Hmm. So I'm also the CEO for that company. Then uh, it's a registered private limited company. We are uh, first and foremost uh, doing uh, uh, for uh, uh, investing as well as uh, inviting good products, which has got a sustainability inbuilt into that. So that is focusing more into uh, road infrastructure in the country. So we are just starting the company. In fact, we got the first order from the government of Maharashtra and uh, we would be uh, in building in more, uh, we would, you know, this particular product will extend the life of asphalt roads in the country. It's just in the beginning stage, it's a product from the United States of America. Uh, I'm, uh, we are the uh, exclusive distributors for that in India. So we are just beginning our first trial order is happening in Junar near Nasik. Uh, on the 25th onwards of this month. So that is the first one. Then along with that, there's another product which is coming. Uh, that's what, you know, I'm I'm marrying the mainstream business with the sustainable future life. Now that product is coming. That's also a joint venture. Uh, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a, right now we're beginning with the distributorship for a waterproofing product for the mainstream highway bridges and also on the rooftop uh, high rise buildings. So this is on my, uh, let me say that I just, uh, with a sustainable approach out there and I'm trying to find my bread and butter. Okay, I mean, that's number one. Then I'm spending some time on carbon credits. Mm. Now we have a foundation known as Green Gauge Foundation and we are working with uh, various kinds of carbon credit investors uh, based out of Indoor, but that's the carbon credit uh, capital of India. And uh, so since my SDG, that is the Sustainable Development Goal approaches and the knowledge and the connections across the world, I am putting some time into carbon credits, which also is why I call it Junior Avengers means these are all ideation and advisory services hmm. and consulting services. So that's on the carbon credit. Then beautifully, I am also doing something on responsible tourism because hmm. I love traveling. Uh, so responsible tourism I'm doing. Then in the space of AI, that is, uh, uh, you know, artificial intelligence I'm doing uh, on the health uh, care sector. That's also a classmate of mine who has got 14 patents in the USA, in, in San Francisco. So uh, he is, uh, I'm advising him to promote that product uh, in India. And it will go very well with the NHRM, NRHM, National Rural Health Mission, as well as ABDM, that is the Aishman Bharat uh, Digital Mission. So these are the four things uh, I'm doing, focusing more under the junior ventures, but these are all different companies, but I want to call it the junior ventures because that's my name. So that's what I call the four junior ventures out there. Mm. Uh, and no one is going to question me about what venture you are doing because it's my own ventures out here. Then I give honorary time to NGOs uh, on my uh, time as advice uh, and cost, you know, cost, you know, cost covering, like travels and other things. So otherwise, I give honorary time to NGOs in terms of fundraising. And that becomes uh, raising funds through my network in the corporate sector or introducing people, giving them idea, helping them to build up a framework for uh, sustainable fundraising. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Right. So as an ESG and corporate governance expert, what values do you bring to the table? Well, you know, uh, uh, I, I again, I will use the word Connector, hmm. a connector with an idea, connector with uh, out of the box thinking. Uh, it's just not, you know, I mean, people get into the, the the usual framework of that and adhering to the framework. I would love to question, uh, you know, how do you, uh, you know, do the ESG? It's just a, a complaint or a greenwashing or how can you really bring more value by thinking out of the box and connecting, hmm. building up a network uh, that network definitely is working with the, the government sector, which is important because that is the kind of the complaints uh, driven approaches out there. So it has to go beyond complaints. And uh, um, then also how to make uh, value for your CSR money in uh, through innovative uh, financial mechanisms rather than just giving the money or writing a check out there. But you know there is uh, uh, you know there is a uh, backward and forward uh, connections or integrations to be done uh, in terms of seeing that uh, your CSR money is adding value to your company within the ESG framework and actually it is another form of advertising 
and not just per se in advertising, but you know, building goodwill value uh, by not uh, greenwashing again, by doing that and seeing that the impact, the impact, uh, you know, uh, the CSR money or ESG approaches, engaging the employees also, engaging the employees also in terms of uh, being part of that passion-driven ESG approaches out. You know, so it's just like yeah. you know, uh, being compliant, uh, but at the same time, uh, seeing uh, innovative ideas come into, uh, you know, the, the, in the execution of the ESG and the CSR and uh, informing and engaging the, um, the government, the civil society, as well as making ESG as an extremely stronger, uh, you know, component in the boardroom. Mm. And, you know, because so, it has yeah. to be, the ESG has to be, it's just like the prime minister or the uh, home minister. It, it, the ESG has to be the portfolio of the CEO, none other, none lesser than the person or the chairman. And mm. so what the ESG becomes uh, a tool uh, and the commitment of the company at the hands of the CEO or the chairman, whoever may be the, the final uh, uh, the, the decision making person like, yeah. yeah. So what are some of the most remarkable changes you have seen in your field with changes in technology and what changes do you expect to see in the future with the advent of new technologies such as IoT, AI, ML, blockchain, big data, web 3.0, etc. Yeah, I see. These are all, you know, um, this is a 10x approach, you know, multiplication. Uh, so with the, with the advantage or the invention of AI or machine learning or uh, big data, because today everything is data, hmm. you know, data, data, data. There is courses now started with data science. Even my own institute has started, you know, MS in uh, MBA in data science and stuff like that. Well, you got to be from an ESG perspective, this data, everyone talks about data. Everyone is happy with data. Uh, okay, coupled with the, uh, you know, ML and AI, this, there's a chances of that getting misused. You know, I mean, that's where you need to be bringing in that kind of an ESG, uh, bringing in that kind of a self-driven, passionate approach, how well this could be utilized for the good of the humanity. Mm. Uh, you know, maybe you can say that, oh, AI, ML, BD, big data, uh, Web3, uh, you know, everything, everything put together, um, people can do. Uh, who are really good can become a mandrake the magician. You know, I mean, the, 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 the magic van can be put out there. The data can do everything. Fantastic. Because uh, even the children, uh, the new age children, they know how to use it well and they know how to manipulate it well also. Uh, they know the, the hackers can come in out there. So there has to be. Of course, the cyber security is so important. It is emerging. But at the same time, along with the cyber security, there has to be a social uh, you know, knowledge uh, being, uh, you know, transferred among the community and they make it very clear. And even at the level of um, um, uh, the government, just like TikTok, you know, you mm. know, TikTok is a Chinese product. Well, I'm not going into that area, but then it, it, it could be implanted out there to get the data, uh, you know, going to China uh, and then they can use that data even for, uh, country to country uh, defense, uh, not even, yeah. they can even use it to destroy India. You know, I mean, good that we banned it, you know, I'm, you know, good, definitely be good that. So these are the kind of a things which we need to be very careful. And that is where in the cybersecurity side, how well we could be engaging the public uh, in terms of being alert, being aware, and not just get, um, you know, what do you call, uh, you know, slaves of usages of this, but it has to be a studied and learned knowledge so that, you know, you uh, become a contributing person uh, thinking about your own country, your own economy, and that is a responsibility. So the social, the ESG, as well as the social development sector can uh, play a fantastic role out there. Yeah, I mean, even, I'm not a, uh, you know, I used to work with Keshav Mahindra. So Keshav Mahindra was, uh, you know, at that time he was, even at that age, I mean, and at that time when I used to work with him, I was only 33, but he was some 58 or 60 or 70, I believe. But he was so savvy. But, you know, how many of people of his 70 years old so become savvy about data management and kind of things like that? 
So that is also a people's uh, passion. Not everyone has got that kind of a kind of a skill out there. So yeah. when I used to interview him, when I was a student out there, I went and interviewed him. And he uh, was asking me questions. I told sir, you know, I am quite younger than you, but then you becoming much more savvy. I want, he's a sort of a role model. You know, I mean, if age does not matter. That's a number. Even if you are 90, you should be knowing about the use of AI, ML, BD, and uh, its, uh, its advantages and disadvantages. So we're building a community here of industry magnets. The move is meant for cross-pollination of knowledge and building a knowledge-sharing community of corporate giants and industry experts. What are your thoughts about this initiative taken by Mr. Zishan Pathan, Mr. Heval Mehta and the whole World Development Corporation team? See, uh, I think, you know, I mean, I've not read more about that, but I only read this question, to be very frank. I mean, if there yeah. is any kind of information available, I would, uh, first and foremost, I would love to read it understand it and learn it from there. Uh, the, the next thing from my learning and my exposure, I would love to contribute to that. Uh, in uh, contribute through ideation and uh, formulation of uh, action plans and also adding more value by who are the other kind of a people from the world development corporation perspective, which we talk about the world. So it is beyond India. So probably in terms of uh, looking uh, such uh, you know excited people, passionate people who can add more value uh, from a WDC corporation or even designing, it could be a WDC initiative, but when you say that uh, it is a WDC initiative, people will go and say that, oh, this is run by a company, an organization, okay, they've got their ROI approach or they wanted to build their brand and things like that. So that limits, that limits your, uh, uh, you know, what do you call, uh, joining hands by others. So if it is mm. uh, made into a public domain, oh, WDEC is only a facilitator for this. And if it is something like uh, other people can voluntarily or passionately join by man, money, material, uh, anything out there. So that is something which I've been doing, which I call it's an advocacy campaign or something like that. So if there is a room for that, I would be extremely happy to, uh, you know, I mean, to be part of that uh, in in whatever way we we could think about that. Yeah. yeah. And and if at all you're doing that with, with the ESG, and actually it comes to my triangular approach, my tri-sector collaboration out there, because these are the leaders who are thinking differently. When you think differently, of course, it is very difficult to get into the mindsets of other people because, and also, when he, when it's very difficult to get in the minds of the people, actually you're winning because you know yeah. when one question, uh, one idea has been thrown out by hundred questions. That means that idea is strong. You know, otherwise they won't uh, ask you questions. Otherwise, with one or two questions, then I mean, ah, na kuch hote. Like if it has been bombarded with questions, that means there is something uh, in that particular idea, and that idea has to be uh, chiseled out uh, or added more amended, critiqued, which is very good. You know, all the, the mango tree who's got full of mangoes only will get more, uh, you know, more uh, brick bats or more stones. Yes. Great, sir. It was fantastic conversing with you and I'm confident that your insights will greatly inspire future leaders. Thank you so much for joining us today and wish you the best for your future endeavors. Moreover, trust that this initiative by Directors Institute unquestionably has expanded the participants' understanding and enriched their minds. It Thank you so much, sir. It is extremely, you know, it, it was high pleasure uh, to be interacting with you and uh, putting me those kind of questions. Believe me, uh, you know, I learned also through this kind of an interaction and things like that. Especially, I'm very happy to know about the movement of the World Development Corporation and uh, looking mm. forward to be uh, even meeting some of them, uh, you know, Shishan and other leaders out there and uh, seeing that what, what value we can add to your corporation. Great, sir. Have a great day ahead, sir. Fantastic. Thank you.